Hello, so today we'll be di discussing tautologies, um, contradiction, and satisfiable. And so these are kind of three sort of like states of a compound proposition, like a compound proposition can be a tautology, it can be a contradiction, and it can be satisfiable. Um, satisfiable is often used interchangeably with the word consistent. So when you see, um, when it asks, for example, is this compound proposition satisfiable or um, it's the same thing as asking, is this um, compound proposition consistent? So those two words are used interchangeably. So a tautology is a compound proposition that is always true. Always true. And so, for example, I think the one seen in class and very commonly seen the example is P or not P. So we can examine this using a truth table. So we would have P takes on the truth values of true and false. So not P would then be false and true. And then, so when we have P or not P, well, we would have true or false, which is true. And then we would have false or true, which is true again. So then in this case, for any assignment of P, um, this compound proposition P or not P is always true. So that's what a tautology means. A contradiction on the other hand is always false. So another commonly seen example would be P and not P. So all we did was we changed the operator in the middle. And so we have P and not p in this case. And so this would be true and false, which is false, and then false and true, which is false as well. So in this case, p and not p, for any assignment of p, we get that um, this compound proposition is false. So that's kind of what a contradiction entails. And finally, we have satisfiable or consistent. This is a compound proposition where um, some assignment of truth values makes the proposition true. So some assignment to true. Um, and so a tautology, because it's always true, um, a tautology is always also satisfiable. Um, so going from here, then um, we often wonder kind of how we can show a compound proposition is one of these three. And so the most simple way to go about it would be to use a truth table. And this is kind of, but for example, if your compound proposition has maybe four or like five um, different propositions in it, like it maybe has it, P, Q, R, S, T, for example, then you would be making a huge truth table. And oftentimes you don't really want to do that, but it is a way of getting to a correct answer. So this is a good method, especially when there's not that many propositions involved. Um, another way to show that um, something is, for example, a tautology, um, often we use uh, logical, logical equivalencies. So for example, if you're trying to prove this compound proposition is a tautology, um, so it always has the truth value of true, you would go in and you would be trying to like show that like, for example, P or not P, you're gonna try to show that it's equivalent to true. And so if you're kind of given this already and you're like asked to prove this, often logical equivalencies are the way to go. And finally, if we're just trying to determine if a compound proposition is satisfiable, then um, it's often, there's this another method that's often used and we'll go through it right now. Often it involves assigning truth values right on the spot. And so I actually didn't give an example for satisfiable. So if something's satisfiable, um, for example, we could have P and Q, then for an assignment of P equals true and Q is true, this 
prop compound proposition would be true. And so then in this case, we would know that this is satisfiable. And so that's kind of how satisfiable works. And so for example, for this last method I discussed where we're trying to determine if something's satisfiable, um, oftentimes what we can do is um, look at the pieces of the proposition. No. So for example, let's say we have this compound proposition here. And so if we want to see whether or not this is satisfiable, we often can look at where the ands in this occur. So if you have P and, or like this, if you have P and Q, we know that each individual part of the and statement has to be true for the entire and statement to be true. So if the compound proposition you're trying to show um, whether or not it's satisfiable, well, you want to show that for some assignment of truth values, um, the whole proposition, the whole compound proposition is true. So then you will look at the individual pieces um, between the ands and you would want to make those true. So in this case, we see this Q is between two ands. So we would know that we would want that to be true. And then this not R, we would also want that to be true as well. And so if not R is true, then we would want R to be false. So in this case, we have Q is true and R is false. Then this um, implies R, well, since we already knew from this for these parts to be true, we know R has to be false. So then in this case, this R here would have to be false and this Q here would have to be true. And so P or true, well, P, no matter what value P takes on, this whole piece is gonna be true. So this part here is going to turn into a true implies false. And we know that true implies false is always false. So this first part of our compound proposition will always be false. So we would have a false and true and true. Um, that would be false in this case. So we know that this particular compound proposition cannot be satisfiable because um, we know we knew that these two parts of your compound of the compound proposition had fixed values, and to make those two true this first part would have to be false. So then there would be a contradiction there. And even if it's the case that like, for example, maybe this first part didn't work out so nicely and maybe you had to look at a truth table, um, it would make it a lot easier than looking at an entire truth table by knowing that this part, that this Q is true and this R is false. So like if you had PQR in a general truth table, you would have to look at um, all the, different assignments. But here we know that Q is true and R is false. So the only assignments of truth values we would have to look at is then P true and P false. So these are the only two. Um, so like, even if it didn't work out this easily, we would only have to look at these two assignments of P to see whether or not this compound proposition was satisfiable. And so hopefully that gives you some insight onto how to approach these satisfiable um, or like these problems of whether or not the compound proposition is satisfiable and um, helps you kind of simplify it down a little bit. Um, thank you guys so much for listening in.